Hello everyone and welcome back to another very exciting chess game by the legendary Bobby Fischer. So in this chess game Bobby Fischer had the black pieces and his opponent was Mark Taimanov, the strong Russian chess grandmaster. So this was from the Fischer Taimanov candidates match from 1971 which was played in Vancouver, Canada. So this is the first game of that match, uh, of the candidates match. And as we all know, Bobby Fischer defeated Taimonov pretty easily. And then he defeated Bent Larsen and finally, I think, Tigran Petrosyan. And after all that, Bobby Fischer defeated Boris Spassky and became the world chess champion. So I will try to cover how Bobby Fischer became the world chess champion by checking out all these candidate games, if possible. Uh, and then I will try to show some of the notable important games in this channel. And actually, uh, so Mark Taimonov was representing the Soviet Union. Uh, the authorities from the Soviet Union and the Soviet government was pressing so much on Mark Taimonov. So there was huge pressure on Taimonov's shoulders. Uh, because of that, he felt the pressure and uh, he unfortunately cracked under the pressure. So that's also one of the reasons why Taimonov didn't do very well against Bobby Fischer in this match. But also we should not forget that Bobby Fischer was playing like a machine. So Bobby Fischer was extremely strong, of course. That's also one of the reasons. Uh, so for Soviet Union, for the Soviet Russia, uh, getting demolished by an American was unacceptable and it was also uh, not possible. So they were using chess as a propaganda machine. Uh, so it was very important for the Soviet government to have world chess champions representing the Soviet Union. So Bobby Fischer defeated their Soviet representative pretty easily and that was unacceptable and unthinkable. Because of that, after the match, Taimonov's li uh, the life of uh, Mark Taimonov got completely destroyed. He even got divorced from his wife. Uh, and it is reported that after Taimonov lost to Bobby Fischer, he said, at least I still have my music. So he was also a pianist, by the way. So after many years later, Taimonov uh, made an interview. In an interview, he said that, quote, until the match with Bobby Fischer in 1971, everything went smooth. Everything went smooth in my chess career. This dramatic match changed my life into hell. So let's see what happened. We will talk about that later after uh, finishing this match. So in this chess game, uh, this is the first game, like I said, I'm going to check out this game from the perspective of Bobby Fischer. So Taimonov starts the game with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, and we have the king's Indian defense. And then d6, knight to f3, and Fischer castled. Bishop to e2, e5, and Taimonov also castled. Only for the records. If capturing the pawn, then d takes on e5, queen takes, rook takes, knight takes, and then knight takes on e4. So that's a discovery attack to the knight, and black is not losing a pawn. And if knight takes pawn, in between move. Then bishop takes knight and that would be a blunder. So that's bishop takes knight is check and then we can capture the knight. So we have e5 and white castled. So knight to c6, d5, knight to e7, bishop to d2 and normal developing moves. This is not such an order, a, a unexpected way to play in the king's Indian defense. So this is pretty common. So black basically wants to push the pawn and open. So rook to c1 and Bobby Fischer simply pushed the pawn. So e takes on f5, g takes on f5, not capturing back with the knight. So this is the idea of Bobby Fischer, moving the king over and placing the rook in the semi-open file. And black is going to have some attacking opportunities. So we have knight to g5 and then h6. And knight to e6 and this is potentially losing a pawn. Bobby Fischer simply captured the knight. Okay, this pawn uh, is a gunner. Uh, it is going to fall, but on the other hand, uh, as you can see, Taimonov is getting the bishop here. So pluses and minuses. We have queen to c8 and queen to b3 by Mark Taimonov. And 
In this position, of course, if capturing the pawn, then queen takes on b7 is possible. E and knight to d5 seems like an annoying, an annoying move because you can capture the knight. It will uh, solidify and cement the pawn structure. Uh, and actually, if queen takes on e6, if knight to d5, uh, white can't capture on c7 because of the knight on e8. So you can see that black is doing pretty solid. Black is solid in this position. So queen to b3 and c6 defending on d5 and bishop to h5 and Bobby Fischer simply captured the pawn and then queen takes on b7. And actually in this position already black has the advantage because Fischer played knight to f6 connecting the rooks and attacking the bishop so defending the rook on a8 at the same time so after defending the bishop well black has the tempo we have rook over and attacking the queen so in this position uh, Taimanov needed to be careful and he played queen to a6 not queen to c7 can you see the problem in this position uh, actually this is losing so it is black to move and win what would you do in this position if you had the black pieces Okay, I hope you see a5 because this is blocking the only escape square of the queen and the queen is trapped actually and how to defend knight to e8 and trapping the queen. So knight to e8 is coming and there is no reasonable defense in this position. So okay, uh, let's take it back. Actually in this position black is getting some advantage because this is a tempo move. After defending the bishop, actually Bobby Fischer is winning a pawn. Rook takes on b2 and black is a pawn up and attacking the bishop. So defending the bishop but pluses and minuses. So white has the bishop here but Bobby Fischer is a pawn up. So we have e4 and queen to a3. Rook goes back and then bishop to f4. Defending the d-pawn with pushing the pawn and black is advancing. And black has lots of pawns in the center. So c takes on d5, c takes on d5, and then knight to b5, and knight to c7 is possible, forking the rook and the queen, that is the threat, maybe. So knight to g6, attacking the bishop, a very cold move by Bobby Fischer. And we, are, uh, we have knight to d4, not uh, forking queen and the rook. If knight to c7, then this was the idea of Fischer, another very cold move, and very solid, actually. And this is one of the possible continuations. So capturing the rook, capturing the bishop, and then bishop to a6, defending the bishop and attacking the rook, rook over, and Fischer was planning to push his pawn all the way to the end. So it doesn't look very safe for white. So rook to c8, king to h7, and rook over, and then d4. So white has the exchange, but black has lots of pawns in the center. So black is dominating the center, so this was the idea of Bobby Fischer. In this position, he played knight to g6, uh, not trying to defend. And then knight to d4, this is what maybe Taimono realized that. So queen to d7, and then defending the bishop, and king to h7, we have h3, rook over. And okay, so with playing king to h7, let's not forget that Fischer is defending on h6. So attacking the rook, and this is looking very annoying because after defending the rook rook to c7 is coming so fisher played rook to b6 and then rook to c7 but then fisher played queen to a4 both fork, uh, forking the bishop and the rook attacking the rook and in this position actually white has to be extremely careful and taimono played the top engine move but after playing that top engine move white needed to be extremely accurate and after the game, Taimonov uh, admit that maybe after the match, after playing all the games uh, with Fischer, Taimonov reportedly said that he felt like he was playing against a machine. He said that Bobby Fischer was defending extremely solidly. So in this position, this was the best move. Rook takes on g7. And what happens if bishop to e2, then we have knight to e8. So attacking the rook, let's not uh, 
sacrifice the exchange. So after defending the rook, capturing the bishop, and this is losing a piece and black is winning. So it could easily go to the south for Taimonov, as you can see. So white needed to be extremely careful in this position. So if defending the rook, knight back, they say if defending the rook, then capturing the bishop and that's losing a piece. So maybe we can say that white doesn't have a perfect coordination of his pieces. So rook takes on g7 is actually an interesting idea. So this is what Mark Taimonov played. A pretty exciting chess. So king takes on g7 and then bishop takes on h6. So Fischer played king to f7 and if bishop takes rook, queen takes rook. So we have bishop to e2 and then Bobby Fischer is defending the rook. And in this position, black has the exchange. And but white is getting one more pawn. So white has the bishop here and one extra pawn and also white has a lot of activity. But black has the exchange, so pluses and minuses. In this position, the computer engine says that the position is for about equal. And then rook to b1, well, Fischer plays simple chess, he wants to simplify the game. So exchanging the rooks, we have king to h2, attacking the knight, defending, and then checking the king. And all of the sudden, it is not looking very good for Taimonov, because after pushing the pawn, I mean, what else? Black played a very annoying move, and Fischer played queen to b4, and how to defend the idea of queen to e1 and then checkmating the king. So it looks very dangerous. So Taimonov played knight to c6, and if bishop to a6, uh, defending with the queen, then we have knight to e5, and this move is a killer, actually, a very strong move, because now uh, there are many ideas, many tactics in this position. So one of them is knight to g4, uh, checking the king, capturing the knight, knight to g4, forking the king and the queen. The other possibility is capturing the knight with the queen, uh, and after capturing the queen with the queen, knight to f3, forking the king and the queen. But I think knight check is the best. So, as you can see, defending is not that easy. So we have knight to c6, and Fischer wants to simplify the game. He played queen to b4, also attacking the knight. And actually, if a black makes, a, sorry, white makes a blunder, let's say queen to g5, then queen takes pawn, is checkmate. So, and if exchanging the queens, then capturing back, and black has the advantage. So, Taimonov played knight takes on a7 and then exchanging the queens and Bobby Fischer played the move and Taimonov resigned in this position. Well, by the way, after queen takes on e3, if capturing the queen with the pawn, that is a disaster and that is losing a piece. And after white's next move, let's say pushing the pawn, rook takes pawn is also possible. Also attacking the knight, so the white king is too far away, defending the bishop. So this is why after uh, queen takes queen, Taimonov captured back with the bishop, but after Bobby Fischer's next move, he resigned. The move was rook to e1 and white resigned. Unbelievable. Well, actually, almost everything is losing in this position. Well, white is losing material or getting checkmated. So the possible continuation, what else? Defending the bishop and then knight to e5 and threatening to check the king and then checkmating the king with the rook. So defending and then b4 is a killer. Because if bishop takes on d4, then knight to f3, both threatening checkmate and attacking the bishop. So if defending with the bishop, then we can capture the bishop and this is winning for black. Black is a piece up. White has too many pawns, but this is still losing according to the computer chess engine. And defending is very difficult, actually. Uh, the engine gives black minus four points advantage in this position. So d4, and let's say bishop to d2, then we have rook over, so bishop back, and then knight in. So defending with the bishop, and then d3, and the pawn is marching. And black is winning in this position too. So finally, let's check out after d4, what happens if bishop to h6, then knight to f3, and what else? Defending. 
and then we have king to g6 so defending the bishop and then knight to d5 and finally at the end of the day black is going to push the pawn this pass pawn and the pawn is marching and basically this is doom and gloom for white so this is why after fisher played a uh, Rook to e1, Mark Taimonov resigned and Fischer is leading with one point ahead. So this was the very beautiful chess game between Taimonov and Fischer. And this is the picture, the small picture from the match between Fischer and Taimonov, which was played in Vancouver, Canada in 1971, when Bobby Fischer was his, uh, when he was his very best. Fisher at his peak defeating his opposition very easily. So, okay. And I hope I will cover some of the other notable chess games from this match and later his match with Larsen, Petrosian and Spassky. So that's the plan, but we will see. I don't want to give any big promises. So we will see. I hope uh, I won't fail. So I hope to see you again with more interactive, beautiful chess games. Stay safe, take care and bye-bye.